¿Todo bien? <risa> Todo bien, Miguel. <risa> bueno. Welcome. Boa Thank noite. You. Boa noite. É noite? É noite. <risos> noite? Não. A canó noite, oi. Você está em Los Angeles? Não, São Francisco. Em São Francisco. Sim. É, Scott, Scott Moran. É, é, Mas Scott está em Los Angeles, não? Sim, sim. Sí. Você é ah, em Brasil, não? Nós, em, sim. Yeah. Regis em São Paulo e eu em Curitiba. Oh, Curitiba! Las, las mujeres más, las mujeres más lindas. Eh. Ahí está. Dice que sí. Dice que sí. Ahí está. Oh, echo la barba. What's up, Scott? How are you? Yeah. Can yeah. You hear me? Cool. I'm good. How are you? Doing fine. Okay, my friend. Good to see you. There good you are. You. We're fucking around in Brazilian. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, you can, I, you I, can I, all talk Portuguese behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yesterday, oh, Scott, yesterday I was, uh, I was watching the, uh, that, that thing, the super band that you, that you did with Dot McGee, a super band, right? Super group. The super group. Wow. Yeah, more amazing. <laughs> more like, uh, more like. See what that means? See what that barely, means? Barely. Barely mediocre group. What the fuck? <laughs> you, you never saw it, that, Miguel? No, nada. Oh, it, but it's amazing. It's so crazy. I, I, I couldn't believe how you survived to Ted Nugent. Ted, Ted Nugent? <laughs> Ted Nugent. Oh it was, uh, it was um, I think I've described it as a, a car crash on top of a train wreck. It was <laughs> hey, I had fun. You know, I got to be in Las Vegas for two weeks at, at that point in time. And uh, a lot of my What? friends came out. I, I did a reality show on VH1 back in like, I don't know, it was two, 2006 around. It was called Super Group. They, they put me, Ted Nugent, uh, Evan from Biohazard. My God. Uh, Jason Bonham and... Sebastian Bach in a house uh, yeah, uh, in, a, in a house together uh, we didn't know who was going to be there beforehand and then we're in a house together for two weeks and the goal was like could we could we become a band and play a show granted co you know, cover songs uh, and uh, in two weeks and they had a studio built for us and all that and I mean I quickly realized I'm just going to keep my mouth shut for two weeks, which is pretty much what I did. And I went out to a lot of good dinners and I drank a lot of good wine on their tab. And, uh, and I went home. Did it work? Though? Did it work? Did it work? We played, we played a show. It was, we got to play, you know, we played stranglehold, which was awesome. Although, okay, okay. and one of the best parts is when Ted Nugent tells Sebastian Bach, how terrible he was singing it. So. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Fucking duh. It was a train wreck. <laughs> Sebastian was drunk, and Ted Nugent uh, and him were going at it, and that's what the whole thing became about. And me and Jason Bonham, we would just go hang out in another room and like listen to music because he was like sober guy, and we would just like he's hang a nice out. guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we would just hang out, chill, and listen to music, and he would tell me stories about his dad. So that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> But the, it's, it's funny because also Bob McGee was the, the, the manager for that. And then, uh, and the funny is that Don McGee was the one who fired uh, uh, Sebastian, right, from his kid row. Yes. <laughs> and, he, and, and when they met, before, when they met, and uh, they said, wow, that will be interesting. You fired me <laughs> from, from his kid row. <laughs> they, had, wow. they had Ross Halfen come to Vegas to shoot band photos of us. And I, and, We're shooting these band shots, and Ross is just, you know, you know how Ross is. And Ross, Ross is a motherfucker. Yeah, but he's like, I mean, he's tearing uh, Sebastian apart, like really huh. going at yeah. him, right? Yeah. And uh, and then Ross tells me afterwards, we're hanging out, and he tells me afterwards, he goes, 
yeah, they they paid me a stupid amount of money and they flew me first class from England to come here and they told me to just t- talk shit to Sebastian the whole time. He's like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he used to do that. He used to do that with Faith No More as well. Um, I hated that guy. I, admit, <laughs> I, I hated that guy because he was so fucking mean. And he wasn't mean to me particularly, right. but he was like really kind of, uh, how do you say it? Abrasive. He, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he would call uh, uh, our drummer, Puffy, yo, Jew knows. Wow. Yeah, he would say shit like that. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. We wow. were like, whoa. He's whoa. like, hook nose. Yo, hook nose. Put your head down, hook nose. Wow, he never got that deep with us. And I, yeah, you know, yeah, I've, yeah. I've got a pretty good, you know. No, you, you, you <laughs> not, not like him. But anyway, <laughs> but but we all were like, that's kind of fucked up. Like that's really fucked up. Yeah, yeah. So well, it, so that's one photographer. Uh, uh-uh. right. I hear you. Don't want to work with. Not me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> super group. Yeah, that was super, uh, super group. I, I I had a good time. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, nice guy. I, I will introduce you you in Portuguese. Uh, um, so uh, we start to, to to talk. All right. Sure. Okay. Boa, 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 boa. Meus amigos e minhas amigas, estamos aqui para mais um papo de boteco <laughs> aqui no nosso canal. E eu tenho hoje, junto com o Paulo Barão, o privilégio, o prazer de conversar no. com dois caras sensacionais. Bem-vindo, Mr. Mike Patton e Miss Scott Ian. Welcome! Thank you! Thank dale, you. dale, dale! <laughs> Congresso de Music Business, tudo o que você precisa entender para transformar sua arte em business. Faça parte agora do maior congresso virtual de show business. Em esse congresso, eu convidei a grandes amigos que já fizeram parte da minha história no show business. Vocês vão ter aqui pessoas que são donos de casas de shows. Vocês vão ter aqui artistas renomeados mundialmente. E convidei muitas pessoas importantes. Trouxe todas elas. Com eles nós saberemos o caminho certo que deve ser trilhado. Quais foram seus acertos? Quais foram seus erros? E como que eles deram volta? E como se criaram essa estratégia? Você não pode ficar de fora. So, uh, uh... Meus amigos e minhas amigas, nós vamos conversar uma série de temas aqui com os nossos dois convidados. E, obviamente, você sabe que tanto o Patton quanto o Scott, eles estão numa nova formação do Mr. Bungle. E eles acabaram de lançar um disco muito legal chamado The Raging Bell of the Easter Bunny Demo, que é, na verdade, uma regravação da primeira demo do Mr. Bungle. E, a, é. e, e essa formação tem também o David Lombardo, que você evidente sabe muito bem. São os caras sensacionais. So, my friends, uh, uh, listening to the, the the demo tape and the new recordings, I was impressed by the fact that the songs have not aged, which is uh, uh, something quite common when reveal, reviewing songs from the past. Obviously, uh, everything everything sounds much better now, but those songs were a Polaroid of the time in which they lived. Was there any weirdness in playing them now as uh, responsible adults? Uh, in a way, did you guys put maturity aside a bit <laughs> to revisit the sensations of when you were young and crazy guys? And if you want me to answer, I would say uh, we just did it better. 
we did exactly what we wanted to do um, in a better way. Like what we wanted to do back then, you know, we were teenagers and we had no recording equipment. We didn't have money to go into a studio. So we recorded it really very horribly. <laughs> and, 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 and so to, to, to have the privilege, you said privilegio, it's, it's our privilege to revisit this music um, uh, with guys that get it, you know, guys that, you know, like really, really get it. Like, like back in the day, you know, like uh, we just kind of have to admit we were kind of fucking around. Like it wasn't really like, we weren't really good at it, you know? Mm. And so to have pros like Dave and Scott, man, it just made it legit. Just made it like, like it made it real. It made it mm. real. The beat. For, yeah, for me, I, I like what you said about, did we have to like throw maturity away to, but it was kind of the opposite for me. I felt like I needed to be more mature and more focused because I hadn't played, especially my right hand. Mm -hmm. I not, not only had I, I hadn't played stuff like that in a long time. I've never played anything so consistently uh, fast and intense over <laughs> <laughs> over those song lengths too you know i mean i did sod but everything in sod was 40 seconds you know i mean yeah. this is these are five six minutes sometimes seven minute songs where so much of it is a consistent i mean uh, uh so the stamina and the energy and everything i i really had to focus and really be the best i could be to actually learn the songs first the learning curve was pretty tough and then you know to maintain them i still like right now like we know we have a show coming in <laughs> september in chicago and uh i started i started working on it two days ago because for me like i i'm also i'm also a perfectionist when it comes to this and i know when i walk on stage at riot fest this fucking hand is gonna be yeah so you know yeah a boy <laughs> but uh yeah it um it uh I felt like I had I actually had to be more mature and really, really take my guitar playing more serious than I had in a long time. Well, I actually I, I love it. I guess that two days ago I saw the loss of control of from Bay Halen. I did amazing. Come on, I was yeah, that was really amazing. I and I saw you start very concentrated to yes. give it, but because you put it like uh, the, the trash, a little bit of trash metal, into that song, and also Mike is stuck in the in that very uh, obscure, you know, is it, start like very school, and then too, it was amazing, really. I, I'm very big fan of Ben Halen. Um, I well, ask you because I, I ask you because Miguel, you, you just you just said that you you been like when you been young, probably. You, you choose that song, The Loss of Control of, of Van Halen. Why? Why? Because that was also some, uh, uh, Van Halen also influenced you in all your career? Claro que. Si. Um, I, okay. Honestamente, <clears throat> Mr. Bungle tried to play Loss of Control. That was always one of my favorite Van Halen songs. Because it was the weirdest one, like mm -hmm. the most kind of uh, complicado, no? Yeah. And very complex, see, the, the arrangement. And so we tried it with Mr. Bungo like way back in, like in the 90s. Couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Then I tried it with, I, I, I suggested it for Fantomas, Lotaranda. Right. Ya sabe. And, and, yeah. and Buzz was kind of like, eh, I don't know, it's kind of like too much. And so when we had a chance 
to do, you know, a, a, a tribute. Really, when, when Eddie died, it was kind of like, oh, man, fuck, we got to do something, right? And so I, I kind of brought it back to the band and just said, hey, what do you think? And I didn't know. I didn't know. And, and on, honestly, it's not an easy song to sing either. It's all over the fucking place. Yeah. Um, but but I felt I felt really bad for the for for Trey and Scott because, <laughs> <laughs> because I saw his Scott so concentrate <laughs> uh, because listen, listen. We, we did a good job, but it took us two guitar players to do one yes. guitar player's job. You understand? Yes. Yeah. I was terrified. <laughs> when I was terrified because you know I love Van Halen, and it's so not my it's not my style of like for me as a guitar yeah. player, you know, uh, uh, like yeah, there's some riffs I could play, sure, rhythmically and stuff like that. But you know, if we're gonna do this, of course, uh, I want to do it good, and I want to pay tribute and I want to do it justice and make it great, you know, and I've known that song totally. since it came out. And, and uh, so, yeah, I was just like, man, I, I got to learn this shit. Right. And uh, yeah, I just practiced and practiced because, you know, the, that, 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 that's the easy part for me, actually, even though you see me, I'm concentrating because they're fucking filming us and they're recording us. So I don't want to fuck up. Like I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. But li literally, when, when when you say that's your easiest part, that's my hardest part because ah. I can't count it. I just can't count right. it. That 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 like I I just can't. I don't know. Um, musicians have feel, you know, and I, I'm not like a studied guy. Like I'm not going to count that shit. Right. So I just have to feel it. And and I just could never feel it. So like I was always looking at Trevor, like lost control, lost control, lost control, <laughs> lost control. But I didn't know where the one was. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, right. It came out great. Yeah, I, I love it. it. I like. I I must have watched it and you know since we did it and listened to it so many times. And I'm st like I'm blown away by it. Like I just I'm like yeah. well, listen to what it's we killer. did. It's so cool. It's killer. <laughs> killer. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know what so you cool. know what's amazing about it is actually the fact that um Lombardo's drums, you know, his toms sound just like Alex Van Halen's. Yeah. Duk -duk 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 -duk. Like in in the yeah. cowbell and all that shit. Like like he nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's yeah. so fun to play too. Like now that, now that I like I know it and we know it. Like I, it's just so fun to play. Like because uh, I guess because I'm not scared anymore. So now it's just like <laughs> well, you, know. you 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 prepare yourself because for, uh, probably now always on the shows everybody's gonna ask for that song also <laughs> on the set list. And we will never play it. <laughs> <laughs> Quem sabe? <risos> é. Meu amigo e minha amiga, eu vou interromper um pouco esse papo, porque eu tenho uma dica sensacional para você, que é o novo livro do Dave Mustaine do Megadeth. Memórias do Heavy Metal. São 368 páginas de uma sinceridade desconcertante. Fotos. São histórias inacreditáveis. Você pode adquirir esse, esse livro com um kit exclusivo que vem com o um paper do Mustaine para você montar, uma réplica dos primeiros flyers dos shows do, do Megadeth e vem com um marcador de página. Só que esse kit ele só vai durar enquanto tiver no estoque. Você já sabe como faz. Clica aqui no link aqui abaixo ou no QR Code e preencha o cupom de desconto com Regis Tadeu indica. E aí, na compra, você vai ter um enorme desconto. Não perca essa oportunidade. Uh, Scott, uh, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's one uh, absurdly complex and weird song uh, in the, the Mr. Bungo album called Sudden only Death. One? There's only one? That, that must have been a lot of work to learn. Uh, did you work over that original demo or a, a more re a recent uh, reference in the song? Uh, yeah, they, um, Trevor and Trey uh, would make videos for me and send me videos of all the parts. Ah, yeah. So then I would, you know, and uh, 
So uh, I would learn all the parts and then start putting the arrangement together, specifically with sudden death, because that, I mean, I don't remember the exact number. I, I remember counting at one point and I think I actually changed, I changed like 93 times or something like doing something different <laughs> yeah. in that song. And uh, oh, so wow. there's, yeah, there is, at, you know, it's weird because Trey said to me, he said, yeah, this is a beast. Like it's, it really is a beast because it's not, it's not, you know, it's not verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, end, you know, it's this weird linear journey where it's just constantly evolving. So I figured, all right. And Mike, I actually, I remembered after seeing a Phantom Oz show somewhere in Europe one time, and I talked to Buzz after the show and I was like, how do you remember all those and he said, I learned it in sections. And then I kind of put it together. And that's what he yeah. told me. So I figured, okay, <clears throat> sudden death. I learned it in two minute sections. So I would focus on the first wow. two minutes, then yeah. the next two minutes. And, and then I would, I would put it together. And then, you know, after about a week when I would play it all the way through from start to finish, I, all of it, it start, it all made sense in my brain, even though it's not your standard arrangement. Uh, um, Trey said to me, he goes, you'll see it all makes sense riff wise. Right. We're building to this place and you'll see how it's all going to. And it really did. And now I actually find for me, that song that with the hardest one in some weird way is the one I can re I remember the best of all the songs always like that one. Right. It does well, in some crazy way. It's this linear uh, path, even though it's constantly changing. I always know what's coming next. I don't know. It's like a building. It's like a building, building a wall, brick by brick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or you know, you if you're if you you're trying know? to memorize a script, you know, you just yeah, yeah you, re you remember the part that's before your line, and you just keep keep going. Totally. I'm I'm talking about also about these compositions. Uh, Mike, yeah. you are uh, known as a Mister One Thousand Voices. Uh, also, uh, you are you been in so many bands, but very experimental bands also. You know, uh, what makes me think is, wow, a guy who has so many bands, one, to, oh, okay, Final More is is let's say is the most well known band because it's more uh, popular, let's say in that way. But you being involved in so many things, also with Bjork. And very experimental things. Uh, how? What did you listen normally? And how is the way that you compose? And how that influence all these bands in your head? Uh, that's a long <laughs> question to answer. But um, <laughs> all, all I can tell you, Emil, is is I write what is appropriate for the moment. And, 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 you know, for, for Bungle, like, for example, we, we were just talking about uh, Sudden Death. I wrote that song in my bedroom on a one-string guitar. <laughs> yeah. I'm not fucking shitting you. That's, like, true. Like, I just, that's what I did. That's what I heard. So, uh, uh, um, uh, in terms of working with other bands, you know, you, you, you do what, what's necessary. Like, like with Bjork, it's like, okay, what do you want me to do? And, and you know, I, I try to leave my, um, my balls at the door, my ego at the door, and, and just, like, listen and learn. And, and, and really, like, working with, with different um, bands and people, <clears throat> that's really, like, the most important thing to me is, yo, shut up and listen and learn. And that's what I do. I try and do like with every band that I've been involved with. Right. So, right. And, and Mike, uh, uh, Mike, I, I've always had the, the impression that there are many Mike battles living inside your <laughs> your mind because, because i follow i follow your different projects 
uh, uh, with uh, interest your film scores, uh, the uh, Tetema, Tomahawk, Fantomas, uh, your your Italian hey! album, the People Song. <laughs> I love it. This one, I love it. Lavage. <laughs> uh, so, how does your songwriting process usually work when you have a, a certain music idea? Uh, do you direct it? to the different projects, or do you work exclusively on each of them? Or, or, you, you, you have an idea uh, and you, you focus uh, on, on, on a kind of project or you, you choose another one. How, how does it work in your songwriting? Your song I project? wish I had a good answer for you, my friend. Um, it doesn't work. There's no formula. Like, I... It, it changes for every single project. Like certain, you know, like Tatema needs one thing. Uh, Lovage needs another thing. Um, so it's, 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 when you think about it like that, it's, it's actually pretty easy. It's not, it's, it's, it, there's no science to it. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Uh, 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 it's, it's like, it's not like I'm playing you know, in like 10 hardcore bands. It's like, I can adjust to each thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking now with Scott. Scott, you're, you're, I told you many times, uh, also once when, we've been in, in, when we met the last time in Rock and Rio, I told you, you are the last... Rock and uh, Rio! Me. Yeah, Rock and Rio. <laughs> I, I, told, uh, <laughs> I told you, Scott, you are for me one of the last guitar heroes, like as we know, like heroes, you know, that somebody who has uh, uh, something to show, not just playing. <laughs> I image all the 360 degrees of an uh, artist. But there is something very important that I, I always saw, saw by your, uh, as your attitude. When you met somebody big or somebody like big of the old times, like when I introduced you with, with Rudolf Schenker, for example, you always are like, it's like the kid that is inside of you goes through. You know, it says, wow, and you became a fan. I remember the after in the, the Scorpion show, you and me dancing in that show and singing and, and watching Iron Maiden, you know. So uh, how... How would you balance that? You know, the <laughs> first that is inside of you are the artists that you are. I don't balance it. It's just whatever happens, happens. I just, things move me. And, uh, you know, you just got to let that, you got to let that shit come out. Um, that's, it's one of the biggest reasons how I enjoy life is just because things move me and they make me emotional, happy, sad, mad, whatever, you know. So getting certainly getting to meet heroes of mine, like someone like, you know, Rudy Schenker, who I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to play rhythm guitar and why my stage presence is the way it is, because I watched him, you know, because he's like, well, what does that guy do? He doesn't play leads. He doesn't sing. But everybody's looking at that guy. He's yeah. he's like he owns the stage. It's his stage, you know. <laughs> Until yeah. like Matthias would come up and play a solo, but then everyone else is looking. Matthias, it's, it's right. fucking yeah. Rudolph. <laughs> yeah, know? everybody is. <laughs> so he was one of my and and a crazy, really great rhythm guitar player, so solid and uh, you know. So Who's the other guy? Scorpion guy. Who's the other Scorpion guy? Which uh, Klaus? Klaus? Yeah. Rudolph, no, 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 Matthias? no, no. The other guitar player. Matthias. It's Matthias. That's yeah. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. But who's um, the who's the weird? Uh, Michael Schenker? No. Oh, oh, oh um, uh, Uli, uh, Uli, Uli Roth. Uli Roth. Uli. Yes. yes. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That guy was scary, man. I met him once. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. He is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just step back. <laughs> I, I, uh, whenever I, you know, if, if it's a little different, like if I'm, like if I, look, if I was to hang out with Rudy a lot, um, I I could probably be cooler 
about it, but still, I, I still can't help myself. You know, I think back when I'm hanging out with somebody like that, all the times I saw him live and all the great times of my life, listening to, you know, the music that he's made and the joy that it's brought me in my life. And so I can't help it, but just be fucking excited yeah. around people. I, I, you know, I'm not yelling and screaming, but you know, you know, I was telling you, I was yes. like, holy shit, you know, like <laughs> I'll always try and I'll always try and be cool, you know, but inside I'm like, like, you know, even still these days with like with Gene and Paul from Kiss, I've known those guys forever. I mean, I mean they go out and have dinner or something. I inside, I'll still be a sweaty 13 year old and, and it <laughs> some way somehow will always come out in the conversation. I'll, it'll always come up. I'll start nerding out and, um, you know, I, I'm still just a kid. I, I guess maybe because I started a band so early, it kind of stunted my growth in some ways. I mean, I'm very much an adult and a responsible, mature hum, human being, but uh, I'm still like such a fan and such a nerd about all the things I loved since I was a kid. And they all still bring me the same joy that they did <clears throat> when I was seven. You know what I mean? Reading yeah. comics or playing with hot wheel cars. I still love to do that. I don't have as yeah, much time, yeah. but I still love to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very interesting because, uh, uh, being is a part of you. When I saw you, uh, uh, uh that night you play in one way stage and then we were running out to, to, to the back stage with Scorpions. I mean, that day I saw really something Obviously, you play different than, than Rudolph, but there is something you, you remember. And once, I'm going to tell you what. Once I asked Rudolph, I said, Rudolph, why when you, uh, you make the solo, you stay for five, no solo, I mean, the, this movement that he always does. He said, why you stay around five seconds? And he said, you know why? Because everybody who has a camera took a photo and they th and they have a big beautiful photo and they think that they they are the ones big photographers but at the right. end no are the one who are making the pose so i uh, they bring something that i want that they bring to the home and sometimes you do the same in, in shows you know scott because you have that movements as a rock guy who know the the, the 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 stage very well i do do that kinds of moments i wish there was a way when i jump in the air i could freeze and just be frozen <laughs> <laughs> i need you wires for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> why you don't freeze for five seconds then i know I, you know what i'll start doing wire work like uh, kung fu movies and and uh yeah i'll just fly up in the air and <laughs> uh, 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 we're talking about shows and uh, I would like to, to ask you, uh, you uh, Mike and Scott you played uh, uh, to, uh, those six or seven shows uh, with Mr. Bango and uh, when you finished the last one you flew to uh, LA the next morning And the next day you were in the studio uh, uh, to start uh, tracking right. the, the, the songs. Was uh, this urgency essential to the album's outcome? Uh, would, you, uh, would the song sound the same if there had been a break between the end of the, the, the tour and the recording sessions? Uh, uh, would the band sound different uh, with this break or even if there was uh, time to negotiate contracts Uh, with all the record labels, if not uh, Ipecac or Ipecac? Nada de nada. <laughs> uh, the, 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 to me, and maybe it's an old school kind of metal or punk way of doing things. When you are on tour and you, you're, you're like on point, like you really are like, <laughs> you're fucking feeling it, you know? Then mm -hmm. record exactly as soon as you can afterwards to capture what you were doing. Because uh, 
that shit can disappear. If we, if we would have like taken like three, four months off, maybe it wouldn't have sounded the same, you know? Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah, we were we were fucking tight coming off those shows. I mean, we were exactly. really, really tight, just as tight as tight as you could be in that moment. So we, the idea was let's capture that. Yep. Right. Yeah. Because we I, recorded, I, we recorded very much live, too, in the studio. Dave's drums true. were set up, and we had the guitar true. rigs set up and bass, and Mike was in the middle of the room, uh, singing. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of what you hear on that record is actually w- what we cut live in the room. Uh, right. True. true. Oh, Amazing. Oh, uh, Miguel, let me ask Wait. you a, a funny theme. Uh uh oh. I, 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 I heard I heard that that tour the um, final more made with uh, with Guns N' Roses. Uh, you you have something like that terror shit, and you put a a, a shit in, in glass of the, <laughs> of, of of Axel Rose. Uh, <laughs> it's not true. true. No, not no, no, not true. Pero. No. At all, <laughs> I did. I did piss on his. Um, he had a how do you say a teleprompter, like a like a un, yeah. screen, no? Yeah, screen. Uh-huh. Yeah, teleprompter. And like one day, I was just like so bored. Like, it was just like such a drag touring with those guys. I hate. I hate to say it. They treated us like shit. Uh, they paid us really well. But we were like, really, just every day, like looking for something fucked up to do. And so, like one <laughs> one day, like I just took it out, and I'm like, Wee! and I like pissed all over his his um teleprompter. The shit story is different. That's what was with L seven. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. Cause they, are they like it? <laughs> they did not like it. They did not like it at all. <laughs> um, why? Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny, you know? And what I did was I took a, I took a, I took a shit in their orange juice. Okay. And then put it back in their, in their, in their fridge. No. And, um, <laughs> And they figured it out, figured it out later. And they're like, man, that's the most fucked up thing. I can't believe you did that. You yeah. fucking asshole. And I'm like, I thought it was funny. <laughs> like, eh. what, look, what, when, you're, when you're young, things land differently. <laughs> they, they, they were a little older than me. So they were like, man, fuck you, man. That's fucked up. But, hey, we had up. a we had a crew guy. Our first ever time in Germany in '86, we were in the Markthalle in Hamburg. Markthalle, and uh, I know it the, well. The catering, the catering backstage in this little bathroom where they had it set up. I mean, there was sh- shit on that table. It was like no, we wouldn't touch anything. It was weird puddings and. Christ shit it was just disgusting and it smelled bad and <laughs> it had been sitting out all day so our guitar tech our guitar tech took one of the balls off the table took it in the bathroom shit in it and put it back on the table and nobody noticed <laughs> just people crew guys were in there taking food off the table taking food sitting down eating and there was a bowl of crap sitting there for the rest wow. of the day I did something similar to um, to Guns N' Roses, actually. Um, <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I was bored. And what I did is I took a chocolate cake. It was like a big, big table of catering, right? So, like, I took this cake and then, like, I put, like, some of my shit inside of it. Put it back there. And then we watched. And then we watched. 
Like, because I was hoping, like, oh, maybe Axl Rose will eat it, you know? <laughs> Instead, our crew guy fucking picks it oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no. and, and he's sitting next to me. And he's about to eat it, and I'm like, don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> <laughs> like, at the last second. Oh, my God. <laughs> so <Amazing>. the experiment <laughs> failed. Experiment failed. <laughs> Talking about experimental things, once in tour with Anthrax, uh, I was the promoter. And you, you remember that, Scott? In Monterey, uh, somebody brought us tequilas. And I took the two bottles of tequila in front, and I, I, I then I decided to, you know what? In Mexico? I, I came to the, in, in Mexico, yeah, in okay. Mexico. Yeah. Uh, so we've been together in Mexico, and then at the end of the show, I was imagining two bottles of tequila, Don Julio, just myself. So I came to, to the band and said, hey, guys, we have to go. Uh, uh, it's time to go. And I don't know if you remember that, Scott. I, I, I just say, no, we want to hang out around here. I said, okay. I brought the bands to the hotel. I don't, don't remember that. I brought the, the, the three bands. I said, okay, the guys, they want to stay there. The day, the day after... You led me in, in Monterey and you oh. flew to, to, to Chihuahua. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I do remember that. Yes. My God, is I, re- I wake up and say, hey, what is, where are the guys? I was a note. Okay, motherfucker. You, 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 you forgot us? So I, we forgot you now. <laughs> yes, I remember that. <laughs> oh, young and nuts. Uh- uh, uh, guys, um, talking talking about the the new album of Mr. Bango, one of my favorite tracks is uh, "Wrapping Your Mind." Bring your mind because yeah, because it's a kind of metal core that melt my brain with harmonic solos and amazing riffs and. Uh, monolithic drums of Dave uh, Lomb- Lombardo. But uh, that, there's a song called uh, uh, Spreading the Tides of Death. Sounds to me like a, like a mockery of those metal bands that took themselves too, too seriously in the early 80s. Is that right? Uh, what can I tell you? Um... <laughs> We, we, we definitely were not one of those bands, and we loved to make fun of those bands. However, we loved those bands. So, um, actually, it's funny you mentioned that song because that's I think that's my favorite tune as well. Like, uh, I don't know, it's 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 nasty. It's nasty. Um, but. But like in terms of you know, is it parody or is it real? You decide. <laughs> it's your decision. <laughs> it's your decision. Just have it. Yeah. What was the the most ridiculous aspect of that generation of uh, uh, metal bands, uh, speed metal, uh, black metal, and that kind? What What's the most ridiculous aspect of that? That bands uh, to us, everything was everything yeah. was ridiculous. Even <laughs> even Anthrax, we were just kind of like like all, <laughs> all of it was just kind of like ah, all right, okay, you go as fast as you can and drrr, and you be technical and then you maybe you know get chaotic sometimes and 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 I think the one thing that that we I mean, dude, this is like, fuck. I was 16, Holmes. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> I'm 50 fucking four. So it's a long time ago. So I'm trying to remember. But um, uh, I, I, I do believe that we took the metal scene, the hardcore scene, all of it as a joke. And that we thought that we could make music that, well, would be in that canon, but also make fun of it. 
and and, right. and that was sort of like our thing, like yeah. like like that was it. We did the same thing with SOD in 1980. Yeah, there you go. At the, yeah, at the yeah. same time as they were doing that stuff, like we did, we did the same thing. We just took the piss out of out of. I mean, we had a fucking song called Milk, you which know? I, I mean, love, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, which, one of my favorite songs. The idea was because I want some milk. <laughs> nobody was really doing blast beats yet at that point. You know, I know. I, I you know I, well ask, I know but you know what I mean not not that much but so we figured let's have the most brutal track we can make with the craziest f- fastest fucking brutal track we can make and then I wrote the lyrics about milk because we're just <laughs> taking the piss out of the whole thing yeah. amazing beautiful oh, by the way <laughs> Scott they have four years hi Andreas four years. Uh, no, what dude. The fuck? Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that was a surprise for you too. Alemão, alemão, alemão. Meus amigos e minhas <laughs> amigas, temos temos aqui a surpreendente aparição. Sabe de onde? De Andrés Kisser. Bem-vindo, Andrés. Oh, obrigado, cara. Thank you very much. Thanks for the the invite for the surprise. Yeah. It's been a long time. We're not Who on knew? the road. No, no backstage meetings. You know, festivals <laughs> and that stuff that we used to see each other. And uh, it's fucked up. But uh, it's good to be here. Right on. Good to see you. Good to see you too, you man. Too, man. <laughs> forever, man. Uh, Andreas, I was just talking about you. Uh, me, Charlie, Frankie, and Joey were on uh, uh, Chris Jericho's podcast, and they were All right. telling the story how. Uh, you when you were out on the big four shows in Europe and Chris rode on the bus one night and you taught everybody how to make a bong out of an apple. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah, that was a crazy ride, man. We, I, I remember we we were talking about the Beatles and uh, uh, Charlie and, and Chris are, are, are Beatles freak, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. I was kind of criticizing the Beatles, which for a Beatles fan, it's, it's, it's sacrilege, you know, so that was cool. <laughs> You know, telling them that uh, the Beatles uh, denied the stage, you know, very early. And for a musician, that's a fucking, you know, it's crazy, you know, to not to be on the stage and just be in the studio. Of course, they did great stuff in the studio. But, uh, I mean, music happens on stage, you know, at least, you know, imagine right. the Beatles compared to the Rolling Stones, for instance. The Rolling Stones is a much better band live. I mean, we, if, when you see the Beatles uh, playing... Uh, Playing uh, in 1970, you know, get back there, the, the the last concert on the on the roof. Yeah, they they they're like an amateur band, you know. <laughs> I know it's like a, it's, yeah. it's heavy to say, but, but it, they no, they no, let no. they lost they lost the stage rhythm. Right. You know, I know it, I, it, I agree with that. Yeah, and uh, it's like McCart- uh, McCartney's play- great now, though. I saw McCartney last yeah. two years ago because you know it was the, amazing. The Wings and, and the seventies, yeah. they did a lot really? of touring. They, they put a, yeah. a band together and and they started really to do it, you know. But uh, it's like putting Michael Jordan only training and never put him to play, you know. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> and and the Beatles and the Beatles stopped touring in nineteen sixty six. Yeah, very early. Yeah, very early. Yeah. <laughs> Puta que <eu> pariu. <laughs> but but for me also I, I prefer the Rolling Stones. I think really uh, they being always like more oh, uh, even even in the sixties uh, until now they are it's still more aggressive uh, at this stage. And the Beatles, I think they've been always well. Why why is it one or the other? I've never yeah I never understood. It's not a- it's just different, very different. I just see that the, the 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 fact that they left the stage very early. I think it's a big uh, factor, so you know. Stories, stories, stories. Yeah, you know, you know who I like, Slayer. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Fuck now we're both. talking. Fuck both of them, Slayer. <laughs> oh, yeah, Slayer. Always good life. Uh, uh, and guys. Uh, uh, many artists and musicians had such problems uh, just trying to just trying to keep their creation process in this pandemic times. Is that happens with you too? How your creative process had been worked nowadays? 
You guys go first. <laughs> um, we're we're writing we're writing an Anthrax record, but we only just started again. Uh, just just recently, we had before COVID, like we started writing in late nineteen, and we had about eight or nine arrangements, no lyrics yet, but just music arrangements, and um, and then when COVID hit, we just stopped. We you know I mean, right, me me personally. I was, I was so happy to just, honestly, to just be home with my family and know right. that I'm gonna be home for a while. I, fuck, when do, I could never do that, you know. Uh, I, for me, for me, you know, I know it's it's a horrible thing all over the planet and really horrible for many people. For me, it was, you know, for me, it's an inconvenience, but like, cause. I just got to stay home. I didn't. I didn't get sick. No one in my family got sick. You know, luckily, and uh, and it's been it's been amazing. It's been an amazing break for me. It's and the whole band. We never would have said let's take two years off. We never could do that. Um, yeah. But this two year break for us is going to be the best thing that ever happened for us. Did you I um? Think. Did you um? After your second shot, anybody in your band get sick? Um. Not bad. I had a low fate. I just had a low fever the next day, and that was I it. got nobody fucked up. That's right. You were saying, yeah, really, crazy. like for like a week. I was oh, like, wow. and I thought, like, okay, wait, is COVID worse than this? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, I got better. I got better, and you know, uh, but some bitch, man, it like scared me. Uh, it, it it really did. Yeah, we are waiting here in Brazil to get the vaccine. I think for the the age, I think it's fifty five to fifty nine. Now, huh? in, uh, in, in in Brazil, agora, you're you're in Brazil now. Yes, I'm in São Paulo. Yes, in my, okay. my house. Yeah, it seems Scott. It was great to to be home, but we have a we had a new album that, that just came out. You know, like right, a month right. before the, the the pandemic started and. Uh, it was very frustrating yeah. because the, the 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 calendar, all the shows were, were amazing. You know, we had like a great schedule of all the festivals. You know, we yeah. we will see each other many times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the road. Yeah, and uh, and all that was really frustrating. But at the same time, you know, we created many other uh, situations. Uh, that Wednesday, every Wednesday, we had this event. You know, where we have like uh, interviews. Scott uh, was with us jamming, you know, a song and stuff. And we are putting an album oh. together, you know, uh, uh, because of the pandemic. You know, we have all these guests playing Sepultura stuff. We did throughout the, the year of 2020. And out of it, you know, we have a lot of uh, really interesting, unique performance of Sepultura's music, you know, with uh, great guests. And we're going to put an album out, which is great. You know, something that... Uh, we wouldn't be able to do if it was not for this specific situation. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Opportunity, man. It's like yeah. you take yeah, definitely. opportunity and then make what make lemonade out of lemons, you know. And I'm uh, yeah. I'm studying I'm studying like crazy, you know. That's another positive thing about that. I always complain, you know. I don't have time to study to focus on the on the guitar and everything, you know. So uh, I'm really making the best of it as well, you know, to use this time to, to study a lot too, which is great. Awesome. Right. Yeah. We jumped right back into the songwriting and I was nervous to, to, to start working again. I didn't know how it would go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was great. It felt so good to play. And it, it we can we had like four ideas that we're really happy about. And, uh, yeah, it felt really good to, to be making music uh, and, and you are uh, Scott and you are now in the 50 uh, the, sorry the 40 anniversary right actually yeah. you are also doing that videos and also Andreas Partey I think I, I sing also myself yeah Mike uh, really awesome yeah, Mike also yeah it's been it's been great you know we couldn't we couldn't go out and do shows to celebrate the 40th so we you know I figured we have to do something to commemorate it and I I just had the idea. What if we did like this docu series online and just uh, did like an oral history of the band, kind of, and then have uh, friends 
talk some shit too and whatever. And uh, it, you know, it's it's worked out really good so far. So awesome. A, a você, a você, Miguel, que você Oi. tem feito? Que? En, eh, que você <laughs> tem feito nestas datas? Ah, quem sabe, ué? Actually, actually, Miguel, uh, you 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 speak more Mexican than your Spanish is very Mexican. Sí, exacto. Porque, uh, tú, pero tiene, hablas italiano. Eh, porque, no, sí, eh, hablo italiano, hablo español, pero el mío español es más que mexicano, mexicano. porque ¿Por qué? Eh, estoy de California, cabrón. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Like, I can't speak like, you know, like fucking Colombian. <laughs> I don't live near. And, you know? and, and, and Mike, and Mike, oh, yeah. you speak Italian very well because I love this album. Mondo Cane. Grazie. Mondo Cane. In Italy, in, in Mondo Italy. Cane. Mondo Cane. Mondo, eh, Mondo Cane. <laughs> what, what was your, your inspiration to record this beautiful album? Uh, thanks for asking. Um, yeah. Actually, it was when I was living in Italia. And I there were no bands that I really liked that were playing, you understand? And so I was listening to the radio and I, I found this radio station that only would play shit from like the 60s, 50s and like, like classic Italian kind of romantic ballads. And, and, and it, so I literally put in, this is back in the day, I put in a cassette tape, tape it, and I was still learning the, you know, the language at that time as well. Mm -hmm. So, like to me, it was like double uh, uh, a bonus. And then I'd come home, and I'd listen to it, and I'd be like, "Fuck, the music is insane, and this language is insane." You know, which one am I going to learn first? Um, so the language came because of a lot of other reasons, but. But um, at a certain point, I was like, you know what? I want to pay tribute to this music that like really fucking fucked me up, you know, like really impacted me. Right. And, and so that's that's why I did that. Do you do Actually, you hate it, that, do you hate that uh, Italian uh, uh, progressive rock progressive progressive bands like Premiato Forneria Marconi? No, they're great. They're great. Oh uh, yeah. See, yeah. great. Do you, do you like this? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. Banco, ba Banco del Muto Socorso. <laughs> <laughs> or um, Aria, Aria. Aria, Aria. Yeah. Aria. Whoa. Yeah. That, yeah, the, sin the singer of Aria is one of my big fucking influences. Wow. Demetrio wow. Stratos. Wow. Wow. Good to hear. Yeah. But yeah. I Go to here because uh, Premiato Forneria Marconi is one of my favorite all time bands. They're great. They're great. They're great. They're great. Yeah, but but I also you know I I found something like with Sukero is it, uh, in some in some way. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know the, the, the mm. but, don't. But, but I could tell you for me. Really, don't talk know, to me about you, fucking Zucchero, <laughs> cabron. But oh, pa Paulo Pablo Baru is a poser. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, yeah, you're, you're right, oh, you're, right. Yeah. you're right, guys, uh, is, guys, Scott, Paulo, Miguel. guys, Paulo Baron cries, Paulo Baron cries <laughs> when, when he hears uh, 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 Brian Adams' ballads. <laughs> yeah, I, I cry when I hear Brian Adams' ballads too, but for a different reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I I cry I cry in that I cry in desperation. <laughs> what's this? What what's this? What does Andreas think? That's what I want to know. 
Well, the Italian music. <laughs> I don't know all those bands uh, that you guys are talking about. I know Eros Ramazzotti. Eros no! Ramazzotti. No! 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 Per Paolo. What, what is the, that other um, uh, 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 Laura Pausini? Come on, oh, oh, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> è una lesbica. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know the Italian word that much. Uh, Andreas, know. Andreas, you yes, need you to. <laughs> Andreas, you need you need to hear Premiata Forneria Marconi. Sì. Premiata Forneria. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love that too. È un po' prog, prog, no? Yeah. Prog. Yeah. 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 Prog. yeah. No, figo, figo. Cool. Legal, legal. Va bene, va bene. <laughs> molto, molto bom. Um, oh, molto bom. Mike, uh, you, you also, you work, you work uh, with your films, things, right? Uh, doing uh, the trust, how, how you call that? Um, for films, you put the, the, the songs and, and also the words for different films. You never had the, the idea to be a, as a director because I know that you're a producer. But no, you know what that means, right? You don't care. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know where my bread is buttered. Okay, I know what I'm good at, and I'm not gonna try and like. Are you director? Are you fucking kidding me? No way. Uh -uh. No. Not interested. Not even. Not, not, not even, not even for that uh, terror films or that like that. I did, I did a, a few soundtracks for movies, and uh, to be a director, it's a, it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole different world, man. It's a yeah, such a it. huge it's responsibility, crazy. man. You know, to, I mean, the uh, director is, it's kind of the dictator of the movie. You know, he, he, he has to have a real clear image and what he really wants, you know, and uh, every of everything. Yes, everything. everything, music specifically, you know, because when he's shooting, the music is not there, but inside his head, he knows what he wants, you know, and, uh, and his direction, of course, for music, uh, it's uh, fundamental, you know, to understand what the, what he wants to, to tell, you know, with the movie and stuff. And uh, it's crazy, man. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a cool uh, experience, but it's a, it's a lot of work, you know, that uh, I did a few, but uh, I don't know if I really enjoy them that much, you know. I'd rather be on stage, really, you know, having the, that live, you know, excitement. <laughs> yes. In, instead that, of being in the studio, you know. Yeah, that, 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 there was a one exception. Ennio Morricone uh, uh, composed the song before the filming. Uh, oh, before, yeah. Uh, uh, El uh, unico, el unico. unico. Yeah. He's yeah, the yeah. only guy. He's the only guy that did The movie. only guy. Uh, 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 Ennio Morricone uh, 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 did compose the, 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 the teams bef uh, 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 yeah, before he, the filming. I mean, uh, all those those westerns you know they have that kind of vibe you know so uh that music it, it can fit on on any movie of those you know and he really yeah. got the spirit you know with that with that song and, and that it's is, that's monumental it's fucking huge man so uh, it's still today you know when you listen to that music it's so alive so now <laughs> i opened I for him the soundtrack once. for untouchables oh actually it's pretty good yeah it's pretty good yeah yeah. I, I, I just thought, but you are. Uh, wait, wait, Mike, you, you open for Morricone? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. really? With uh, Mondo Khan. Oh, that's fucked wow. up. Man. Wow. Awesome. It uh, was in, amazing. It was in um, Chile, right? Wow. wow. And it was totally bizarre. Totally bizarre. Porque, like, like, he was a really nice guy, you know? Like, so mm. we, like, we're, we're staying in the same hotel and shit. And, <laughs> and, 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 and his manager says, yo, and Ennio wants to meet you in wow. Italian, in Italian. 
course. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So I'm like, fuck. I'm like putting on a nice shirt, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they go down there and he's like, Aragazzo, che cazzo stai fa? Qua. Like he speaks in Roman, like which is like, <laughs> Roman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's a different kind of Italian. Um, but what he basically said is, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, and, his man, and his manager's like totally horrified, like, <laughs> and, and so I said, I said, yo, we're opening for you, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow night. He's like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. What's, what's the name of your band? Like, he didn't know shit. <laughs> didn't know anything. And I mean, look, when, when you get to be a certain age or have a certain stature, maybe, maybe that's okay. I don't know. Maybe I'll be that way. <laughs> but, but it was kind of like, fuck. Like, I was kind of bummed out, right? Well, and no, man... What are you doing here? He was like, what are you doing? He, he, he goes... He literally said, you're American, but you speak such good Italian. Like, what are you, why are you here? And I go, well, we're opening for you tomorrow. And he goes, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> At all, he didn't know, he didn't really know, like, what was up. And then, uh, I'll, I'll save the details, but the next day was quite um, eventful. Was say. the show okay? Um, it was, but check check this out. We ended up playing after him. Wow! He didn't, All right. Uh, he, he refused to have an opener. It was weird. like, wow. oh my god! Oh my god! And I'm I'm like literally sitting, you know, in my hotel room, going, "What the fuck?" And. Yo, that's why we went there, and and it's like we're playing for the fucking maestro, no? <laughs> claro. <laughs> so it, we 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 were just patient, and and that was it. And we made it work. We made it work. Right. I, I, I I you are, you, <laughs> fala aí. You know, Mike. São Paulo I, e Palmeiras at the final uh, Sunday. São Paulo e Palmeiras finally. It's been yeah. a long time we don't have this uh, this final, and uh, Palmeiras so, and São Paulo are, are playing the best football right now. So mm -hmm. who's going to win? São Paulo, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Palmeiras. Uh, Palmeiras. Fuck off, man. You know me. You know <laughs> me. It's just like fucking you and Billy. Billy uh, went <laughs> on this trap, this Cavalera trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> I, Igor, Igor made me. Yeah, he got the, the shirts first. See, and, uh, yeah. he <laughs> just did it first. <laughs> so well, good luck, good luck, man. Yeah, yeah, we'll be guys, we'll be good. Uh, uh, Paulo, você tem mais alguma pergunta aí, Paulo? No, just, just I want to. Uh, I was trying to ask uh, Scott about the, his influence in, in by Stephen King, because I know that so many of of your songs, right? Being also writing because you are a big fan of Stefan, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but and what's what? What was the question though? Uh, my question is uh, also because because we've been talking about also any Morricone, how important it is for you. You you met before Stephen King, and how was that? You know, how, with the, all these well, things, I've, you know. I've never actually met him. I I, I email with him sometimes which is oh, amazing i try not to wow i try not to use that too much i wait till i have some real questions and, they, <laughs> and then I, uh, <laughs> but um yeah he's cool he usually always answers and uh yeah i've been a fan since i was a kid i read carrie way too young you know probably when i was like 11 or something or 12 years old and uh and i was hooked from there So when when I took over the lyrics for the band on our second album, basically because nobody like 
our first singer was out, Neil Turbin's out, and he wrote all the lyrics. And I was like, well, who's going to write the lyrics now? And nobody put their hand up. So I just figured, <laughs> fuck it. I, I read a lot, so I must be able to write lyrics, right? You know, <laughs> but, you know, I, I just figured I'll try. What the fuck? What do I got to lose? If it sucks, we'll figure it out. And, um, but I, I just, I just started writing. It's not like it was all about Stephen King. There's plenty of stuff that isn't. But yeah, there's, you know, there's probably through the whole catalog, there's probably five songs, you know, uh, that that were specifically inspired by something that he had written. So, um, you know, I guess you could say there is a through line. You know, th- there's not something on every album, but, you know, it's it's something that has been a constant for sure. I'll get an idea or I'll think about something that he wrote and maybe that, that inspires me to write something. Okay. Oh, amazing. Uh, uh, my last two questions. Uh, first one, what's the worst part of being successful worldwide? Is it the adulation from people who have no idea what you sound like? Uh, record, record company people demanding things to overcome success, uh, contact with lawyers and accountants. Uh, what's the worst part of being successful worldwide? You're asking me? A- a- every, a- a- each one. Okay. Mike, mm. Scott, and Andreas. Okay. Eu? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing bad about any of it. I no. mean... No, nada, nada, nada de nada. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with Mike. I think uh, this is what uh, what what make us uh, stronger, you know, to understand the business, the people. I mean, we met so many people on the record labels and uh, technology changed so much and we have, uh, you know, relationship. I think it's all about relationships, you know. It's not about the business itself because business changed so much, you know. Now we have Bitcoins, whatever that means. I mean, you know, it's like a, a, every time it's changing concepts and stuff. How are we going to deal? How are we going to sell? What are we selling? Uh, how are we going to, you know, uh, streaming and all that stuff? I mean, it all depends on relationship, on people, you know. I mean, a network and uh, and having the right people around, you know, the, the crew, the band, the managers, and, uh, wow. and and enjoy, man, you know? I mean, we're here to enjoy ourselves. I mean, otherwise, I mean, it, it, it's kind of crazy to, to, to think that uh, a lot of people, you know, musicians that left this life to try something, uh, whatever, easier, <laughs> whatever that means, you know? There's, <laughs> there's no such a thing, you know? Wherever you go, you're going you're gonna to face trouble you're gonna face problems and then how that's how you grow i mean otherwise you'll be the same you know and uh and i agree with mike i think there's nothing bad about you know it's just things that happens that you have to learn how to deal with and and that's what we do Mm -hmm. i have one thing i have one thing okay scott knows when you're in (laughs) when you're in a restaurant (laughs) yeah when you're in a restaurant and you want to order some eggs and they tell you they stopped serving breakfast, but they have eggs and they have a way to cook them, but yet they won't make it for you. I, for me, that's a fucking deal breaker right there. I'll walk out of the restaurant. <laughs> so when that, well, that's, you don't that's know the, the only chef, bad thing about, that's the only bad thing about touring <laughs> is if I, if I can't, if I can't get breakfast at four in the afternoon, <laughs> there's going to be a fucking problem. <laughs> you got to know the show, homie. Or, you know, but you know, when you're in, when you're playing some shed in Iowa, you know, it's like, it's, yeah, it's I don't tough. do that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mike and, and Scott, uh, my last question is if the original demo of Mr. Bungle would become an official album with a better production at this time. How the people would react uh, at those times? To, how does this? How does this look? Yeah. 
<laughs> it did become an album. We didn't did it, it motherfucker. Did it. Yeah. No, 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 the reason it sounds the way it does now and is pretty decent um, is because we're old men. We know better. <laughs> we know. We know what we're doing. <laughs> Wait, like we've had experience. And, and, and you know what? I, I would like to um, ask uh, Alemo what he thinks of the, of the bongo record. I think it's amazing, man. I I, I played at my radio show, and um, and actually, I, I didn't know it was an old demo. I don't think I I knew. I know the the first album. You know, I love the first album. I, I love the recording. You know, the way the heavy guitars and the clean guitars works and everything. And this came out. I think, fuck, man, what the fuck? It's so, it's trashy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And then and then I learned, oh, you know, this was like an old demo during the, those days and stuff. And I thought it was amazing, you know, yeah. uh, especially the people you have with you, of course, you know. I mean, to, to, listen, to represent this is perfect. Listen, listen. The reason we made that thing was because of you. Scott Lombardo. I mean, like that's that's the shit we were like into. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, like, like. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, beneath the remains, get out of town. Beneath the remains was like, like, uh, oh my god, incredible. Rain of blood. Uh, fucking yeah. fistful of metal. I mean, like those records made what we did like it really look we processed it in a really weird way it's, yeah so it's, it's not totally which is great um, yeah yeah it's not totally how do you say like like secular or whatever like like we're we're just we're weirdos um but 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 i just wanted to tell you that that that's that, awesome man i think it came out in a simple to it a really influenced that shit hard okay hardcore <laughs> beautiful man okay guys thank you so much for this final obrigado uh, muito obrigado muito muito obrigado vocês. thank you man fucking amazing to have this chat muito obrigado a todos vocês i hope to see every i hope meus to amigos see, e minhas amigas soon yes yeah, man yeah yeah meus amigos e minhas amigas, então vocês presenciaram mais um papo de boteco aqui. <risos> com, né? É exatamente porque papo de boteco. Não tem entrevista bons. aqui, cara. Aqui é, yeah, there's no, there's no interview. It, I it's a, I love it. It's a, yeah, é papo de Entendi boteco todo. mesmo. É isso aí. É isso aí. É, é, quero agradecer então Paulo Baron, Mike Patton, Scott Ian. André Kisser, muito obrigado pela, pelo papo aqui. E, 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 e I wish health to you and your family. Amém, right? você. A você. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Stay safe. Ok. Tchau. Tchau. Obrigado. Aí. Obrigado. Valeu, meu amigo e minha amiga, Tchau. você. Tchau. É. Tchau. 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 Pois é, meu amigo e minha amiga. Então, tivemos esse papo aqui. Você... Já reparou que é uma conversa de boteco sensacional. Quero agradecer também o Rodrigo Bart que propiciou toda essa, essa estrutura aqui para a gente poder conversar com vocês, tá? Não esquece de fazer a sua inscrição aqui no canal, visitar a nossa novíssima loja e adquirir o livro do Paulo Barão, Rock All My Dreams, que tem um monte de histórias bacanas. E em, em breve a gente volta aqui com mais um Papo de Boteco. Eu estou achando que, na verdade, essa série de entrevistas devia chamar Papo de Boteco. Total. Um abraço, um abraço para todos vocês aí. Obrigado. Saúde. Tchau.